Hi everybody, it's Gail from Gail's Bookish Things. A few days ago I posted on Instagram a picture or two of my coffee themed pens and today I wanted to do a bit of a currently inked on these few pens. I still have my ongoing couple on in honor of my military sons but today I just wanted to focus on um, these delightful pens that are coffee themed so I think they kind of match nicely with my Uruluku Uruluku case also but anyway that's beside the point but I do like how that all goes together so let us start with my um Twisby this is the I don't know how you pronounce it, but it's like C-A-F-F -F with the accent going that way. So coffee and cream, or just coffee uh, with the bronze. I do like this bronze metal on there, minus the little circular glare from my lamp. In front of me here, I have a little vintage coffee grinder that was <clears throat> my husband's grandmother so it's kind of fun to have that so um, I do not have a coffee themed necessarily inks in here I'm I, I okay so this is what I need to say I like when it matches but I also find that it really limits my imagination so I am trying to come up with combinations of inks and pens that I think might work nicely together versus having to match them that does make me have to think a little bit more. So I have this little note that I keep in my pen case. So I don't forget uh, which ink is in which pen. This is pretty dark. Maybe I should do that a little lighter. So this is um, Twisby. I decided to try a medium when I bought this. Most of my pens are broad and I was just wanting maybe a little bit of a finer line because sometimes I have found the Twisbees to be pretty gushy. Not necessarily all the time, but that's more often than not. <clears throat> anyway, um, I don't particularly love this. It's it's not terrible, but it has seemed to, been, to be running dry for me. So I decided to try Pillars of Creation which is one of the Colorverse inks that my son Samuel bought for me a little while ago. Pillars of Creation, it's a Colorverse ink. And this is really a good match. This is a pretty juicy ink or wet ink, and this makes a good juicy combination. It's a pretty dark color, and it does have a green sheen, but I'm not getting the overpowering sheen with with this combination. You might be able to see it on the nib there and a little bit here in the feed. It's a really rich, saturated, deep purple color. And it's kind of fun with that. I li I'm liking that pretty well. Maybe we'll set them in here as I finish with them so I don't get mixed up. And then in my primary macchiato, this is a Narwhal pen. The name has changed since, or the brand, but I'm just gonna call it Narwhal because that's what I bought it as. And it's really hard to see, but on the tip, well, you won't be able to see it, but it has the amount of pens made and which number pen this was. So it was a limited limited edition that I got from Goldspot a few years back. Um, definitely more black and white, although the white is more on the creamy side. And there are a few spots here where it looks more like coffee um, or like a creamy coffee, whereas here it looks super, super deep, saturated, almost, well, I would just say black, but sometimes when I look closer at it, I do see a deeper brown in there. So in this one, in my Narwhal, excuse the gurgling, primary macchiato, Think it's only one T. This is a broad nib. Um, broad nib. This has a sheen to it too. This ink. This is the Birmingham Pen Company 
burly wood. And I really, really like this ink and I really, really like this combination. I have mentioned before there were a few times when I was thinking I would try to find a new home for this pen. I wasn't really enjoying it, but man, when I get the right couple of inks in here, it's been great. Another one that works super well with this is um, Eroshizuku Takisumi. And look at how pretty that looks there. It really does look like a swirly coffee drink. So anyway, this is such a nice combination and not that I'm needing to match, as I said, but I'm almost feeling like this ink goes well with some of those lighter tones there. And I do like the bronze type or I guess that would be considered bronze, like antique bronze on the band here, on the clip, and then down here. And a, this is funny, but for the longest time I didn't realize that I could take out the nib so that whole nib unit unscrews. And that's one thing I didn't like about it. I felt like it was impossible to get to the inner mechanism at all to do any kind of cleaning or make sure it's rinsed out well. But now that I know that, that helps. It does have an ink window here, which is somewhat helpful, but I still find it a little bit hard to see. I mean, you could tell when it's empty, but it, I mean, it's okay. It, it does its job, but I think it's, because of the dark color of the pen, it's kind of hard to tell sometimes how much ink is in there anyway. On along the similar lines of the other one is my newest Relic pen. And this one did not really have a name, so I just call it Coffee and Cream or Coffee with Cream Relic Pens is the name of the company. Coffee with Cream. You can find Relic Pens on Instagram. There's also an Etsy store. A friend of mine was saying she did not see some of the colorful ones on the Etsy shop, but if you look at Patrick's Instagram, you'll see a larger selection. At least that's what I have experienced. This is a sparkly, gold, shimmery, rich brown that people have commented, and I agree, look like burnt brown sugar or toasted marshmallow. It could be root beer, it could be coffee. I was drawn to it when Patrick said, all you coffee lovers, here you go. I'm like, oh man, you had to say that. You had to call it coffee, didn't you? Because it could have been anything else and I might have been able to resist. But you can see how pretty this pen is. This is a very lightweight pen. It has a cypress nib, which was new to me and that's why I chose to try it just for something different. And I can switch it out for a Yovo nib if I want to. I got the broad and this is a two-tone nib if you can tell. And in this, I have Monteverdi's Jade Noir. It's a very dark, deep green. Depending on what paper and what pen, it can appear almost black, but here I think it shows pretty nicely just that it's a deep, saturated, black-leaning green. You can tell that more in the little scribbly swatch there and I have been wanting to put this over here and I didn't do that. It's my left-handed tendency. I'll blame that. So that's been super fun. The other one I have inked up which according to the ink window is about out. This is my Lamy Cream and this um, this nib is really nice. This is the black coated steel nib. It's a broad <clears throat> excuse me, and um, I actually switched it. The pen came with just the stainless steel look or whatever you call that. Um, but I switched it out from another pen because I wanted the broad nib and I liked how this one wrote better. So this is the Lamy Cream in broad. And I have in this um, Urbain's J Urbain. Grisohage 
which means a stormy gray or something along those lines. This is such a nice wet flow. Some papers it works fabulously on. It does work quite nicely on this Cosmo Air. Um, I'm also using a Stalogy notebook right now, and I'm thinking I don't like it quite as well on the Stalogy, but on this uh, Cosmo Air and a Tomoe River paper that I'm using, it's working well. I just have that ink window, if you're not familiar, right there, and I do not see much of the Jade Noir. Let's see how much we have left, just for fun. Be or not Jade Noir, uh, Grease Orage. About empty. My friend Donna at South Shore Paper first introduced this ink to me. I think I saw it on one of her ink samplings videos and I really liked this dark charcoal deep gray with the gold shimmer. It's such a neat ink. I've used it a long time in my Twisby cement gray. It's a fun combination and it just works so well with that pen but I'm, I'm mixing it up a little and just to try new pens and stuff. I haven't used that combination in a while, but liking it a lot in here. And as I said, this has just helped me to try different pen and ink combinations. Got to put that this was a broad nib here. So you do see the tendency towards broad nib pen. Somebody recently asked on a video if I chose that on a Conklin pen because it was all that was available or did I prefer it? And I generally prefer broad because I like to see a little more of the inks qualities and I feel like a thicker line allows say shading or sheening or um, the shimmer to show better than when you have a finer nib but it's all about your personal preference that's tending to be where I lean although you can see the line is much thicker and maybe in some ways a little harder to read but I guess that doesn't matter too much because I rarely go back and read anything I just like to write <laughs> okay this is a really unusual but fun combination this is the Jin Hao I have the hardest time doing the A before the O that is much less common in English isn't it so I always want to do OA and it's AO this is a medium because it's all that it came in but it works really nicely. This is a KWZ ink and it's called Missouri Norton. And that is, I've learned recently, a type of grape grown here in my home state that is used um, for winemaking. And this was the 2022 St. Louis Pen Show ink. Fortunately, one of the men who kind of heads up our local pen meetup group that also sponsor the or make the pen show happen had a extra bottle and he sold that to me. I was really happy because that was my first pen show so I've had I have an ink from each of the St. Louis pen shows. I was not able to get one in the New York Long Island pen show. I don't think they offered it for sale. It was something you had to win as far as I know, and I didn't win. So at least I have them here on these shows. It's, you know, it's kind of fun, and I have really actually liked these KWZ inks quite a bit. So this is a good, this is a good pen. It's super big. Okay, so it says medium, but it's massive. I mean, I realize that's the writing part, but the size of the nib is just huge. It's chunky. It's really got a big grip section, but it really writes well, and I've had so much luck with really just about every combination I've put in it. It, it was really fun to try something so chunky and bulky and have good luck with that nib. I have to laugh at the fact that I have become a coffee person. Now, I'm not a coffee connoisseur or snob. All I know is it has to have enough creamer in it to not taste a whole lot like coffee, but it can have a little bit of that flavor. So that's my level of coffee, but it's funny because I never wanted to like it and now I'm all about it. So that's all. Thank you for watching. Hope that was fun. Thank you everybody who shares samples with me and inspiration and just a fun community. Hope you all have a great day and we'll see you again soon.
Take care. Bye.